This might be the scariest video on my channel. I apologize. <laughs> Before their last breath, these seven atheists had one thing in common. What? That none of it happened the way you said it did? What a peculiar place to have a party. Welcome to the channel. This week's video is from a holy roller named Taylor, and she's really excited to tell us what these famous atheists had to say on their deathbeds. To hear her tell it, these dudes all knew they were going to the bad place and died hating themselves and were full of regret for denying her God and stuff. I want to preface this video by saying death isn't pretty. It's often painful and long, and people aren't in their right minds. Plus, we're getting all these quotes secondhand. You know, these people aren't writing down their fevered ravings and stuff. Let's get into it. Like and subscribe and roll the tape. Okay, so what sparked this very interesting video topic for today is I was watching this movie called After Death with my family the other night. By the way, if you haven't seen that movie, you should definitely watch it because it is insane. No two near-death experiences are the same. Out of nowhere, a trailer truck kept me head on. I am unimpressed by near-death experiences. They're easily explained by science. They're always culturally based. Christians see Christian imagery. Muslims see Islamic stuff. I was once in the hospital and hallucinated my best friend visited me. He didn't actually visit me. My brain was in an altered state. But it sparked this idea for me because I was thinking about the inevitable for all of us, something that we all have in common here on this earth. Whether we like it or not, we will all take our last breath. And so many people have different beliefs behind what will happen after that last breath. Will it be darkness? Will it be black? Are we going to heaven if we're a good person? Are we going to hell if we're a bad person? And there's people that have dedicated their lives to proclaiming that there is nothing after this life here on this earth. Taylor is going to pretend she knows exactly what happens when we die because she's seen this insane movie about it. You know, she's also got this awesome book and can't grasp how anyone else could read it and not take it seriously. She says in this video that she got a boo-boo once and that it freaked her out and that if it's so easy for a seven-year-old to be convinced, then why wouldn't everyone else just believe it too? And I slammed my face on the tile floor. There was blood everywhere. And I thought it would be really interesting to talk about today their last breath and what they had said on their deathbed before taking that last breath. Yeah, I thought it'd be a really interesting video topic for today. So with that being said, uh, let's dive in. Number one is Caesar Borgia. He was an Italian nobleman, which means that he was of the highest social class. Caesar was an atheist Wrong. and focused on building his life here on earth. Yet his last words, while I lived, I provided for everything but death. Now I must die and I am unprepared to die. We are not off to a great start. If you haven't seen the awesome show The Borgias, you won't know this, but Caesar was the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI. He was a cardinal for Christ's sake, and the internet must be broken because nobody thinks he was an atheist. This guy was injured with a spear, stripped naked, and all he had was a red handkerchief to cover his junk while he died. I question the legitimacy of this quote. I can't even find a source for it. But the dude did have a fascinating life. You should go check it out. Like, even his dead body was moved around and disputed over. Number two is Sir Thomas Scott, an atheist Wrong. who was a chancellor of England. Being taken suddenly ill and finding himself dying, he cried out to the Roman priest who sought to comfort him, and he said, Until this moment, I thought there was neither a God nor a hell. Now I know. And I feel that there are both. And I am doomed to perdition by the just judgment of the Almighty. I'm starting to think Taylor doesn't know what an atheist is. Thomas Scott was a Unitarian who later was all about Jesus. And at his execution for being guilty of regicide, you know, killing a king, he said, I say again to the praise of the free grace of God, I bless his name. He hath engaged me in a cause not to be repentant of. I say, not to be repentant of. Number three, this name might sound familiar, which is Voltaire. And you know what? Voltaire Hare. I would personally like to learn about Voltaire. It was meant to be a joke. 
That's funny, because when I saw Taylor's clip, I instantly thought about Hostel 2 and the Devil's Advocate. The sad part is Taylor didn't take 30 seconds to find out anything about Voltaire. You know, he was a pantheist who was all, all about that Spinoza type of God, infinite attributes, you know, nature and all that stuff. I'm sorry, Barbara, I was wrong. Voltaire was a French writer, philosopher, and historian. He was famous for his wit and his criticism of Christianity. He believed that Christianity was corrupt. Yet the famous anti-Christian atheist on his deathbed said, Taylor seems to have read the first paragraph from the wiki page, but ignored everything down below it. This quote is generally considered to be BS, spread around by a priest and perpetuated on Christian websites in an attempt to besmirch the dude. And here, we get almost a million views of Taylor perpetuating the lie. On his deathbed said, I have swallowed nothing but smoke. I have intoxicated myself with the incense that turned my head. I am abandoned by God and man. And then he said this to his physician. I will give you half of what I am worth if you will give me six months of life. And when he was told that this was not possible, he replied with this. Then I shall die and go to hell. His nurse said, for all the money in Europe, I wouldn't want to see another unbelievable Believer die. All night long, he cried for forgiveness. A month before Voltaire died at 83, he wrote, I die adoring God, loving my friends, and not hating my enemies, and detest superstition. A month later, he accepted the last rites from a Catholic priest. One story goes, when he was asked to renounce Satan, he joked and said, this isn't a time to be making new enemies. So why do Christians go around and lie about free thinkers who believe in human rights and the separation of church and state? Oh, wait, never mind. Voltaire was a renaissance philosopher. He's probably more of a deist than a pantheist. He was denied a Christian burial. They had to secretly bury him. And they had a procession through France that like a million people attended. Number four is probably one of the craziest ones to me, and that is David Hume. David Hume was an atheist philosopher who was famous for his skepticism of religion. On his deathbed, he cries out, I am in flames. It is said that his desperation was a horrible scene. Oh, shit! Hume knew Christians did this ignorant shit, and he had his biographer document his last words and his death. Young lady, you should be ashamed of yourself. After all, isn't lying a sin? Five is Sir Francis Newport. He was head of an English atheist club, and on his deathbed to those who surrounded him, he said, you need not tell me that there is no God, for I know there is one, and that I am in his presence. You need not tell me there is no hell. I feel myself already slipping. Wretches, cease your idle talk about there being hope for me. I know I am lost forever. Oh, that fire. Oh, the insufferable pangs of hell. Oh, that I could lie for a thousand years upon the fire that is never quenched to purchase the favor of God and be united to him again. But it is a fruitless wish. Millions and millions of years will bring me no nearer the end of my torments than one poor hour. Oh, eternity, eternity, forever and forever. Oh, the insufferable pangs of hell. This is getting pathetic. The only place I can find that whole atheist club thing is on Christian websites that say he was a member of a, quote, atheist club. This dude lived to be 88, was buried in a church, and, and was a politician, and got his education from the Church of Christ in Oxford. To be honest with you, there's really nothing out there about this guy. He was just a rich dude in colonial America, and whether or not he threw a temper tantrum on his deathbed and cried about being on fire, who gives a shit? And that's not even the craziest one. Number six is Charles the Ninth, the French king. Urged by his mother, he gave the order for the massacre of the French Huguenots. She's a gunner, Rocco. I'm coming with you, Ma! which 15,000 souls were slaughtered in Paris alone and 100,000 in other sections of France for no other reason other than the fact that they loved Jesus. The guilty king suffered miserably for years after that event. He finally died bathed in blood. Would you like a smint? 
To his physicians in his last hours, he said, Asleep or awake, I see the mangled forms of the Huguenots passing before me. They drip with blood. They point at their open wounds that I had spared at least the little infants at the bosom. What blood? I know not where I am. How will all this end? What shall I do? I am lost forever. I know it. Oh, I have done wrong. Charles IX from France was a mama's boy who based his decisions on what his devout Roman Catholic mother said. He slaughtered some wasps, felt bad, and died two years later from tuberculosis. Was he an atheist? Probably not. Did he say these things? Not likely. His last words are, I die hard, but I'm not afraid to go. I am just going. Number seven is the author of the Satanic Bible, Anton LaVey. The high priest of the religion dedicated to the worship of Satan. One of his famous quotes was, There is a beast in man that needs to be exercised, not exorcised. I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. This video is titled Famous Atheist Last Words, and this isn't his last words. She even admitted it. Also, it's weird to think that a Satanist is an atheist. Yeah, I mean, the church Satan doesn't believe in an actual Satan, but we know Taylor isn't aware of this fact. Yet his dying words, oh my, oh my, what have I done? There is something very wrong. There is something very wrong. Is that clear? Yes, yes it really does blow my mind how Taylor could be so wrong about so many things in such a short amount of time. It's like she went to a single web page, was like, oh, this one sounds cool. This might be the scariest video on my channel. I apologize. <laughs> Before their last breath, these seven atheists had one thing in common. What? That none of it happened the way you said it did? that there was no God. Yet on their deathbeds, these seven atheists had a new thing in common, an understanding that there is surely something after we die. I don't know how she could possibly claim to know what these people were thinking. She seems to have been wrong about most of what she said so far, but she watches Christian propaganda movies that say scientists have evidence for the afterlife and believes it. She's a young, pretty, perfectly honed AI bot. She's a member of an apocalyptic death cult that, well, is obsessed with death. She should be ashamed of herself for attacking her fellow Christians and calling them atheists and not having a clue. Weirdly for me, I have thought about death death since I was seven years old. I had grabbed a pillow and I went to slide on my kitchen floor and the pillow stopped. I kept going and I slammed my face on the tile floor. There was blood everywhere and I cracked my front tooth that I now have a filling to fix that front tooth that is not mine. And I remember sitting on my kitchen counter and I asked my dad for the first time ever if I was going to die. And I I was six years old in the McDonald's drive through and I think my older brother just found out about it, and he was being a dick. So I freaked out, and I got over it a couple of minutes later when my chicken McNuggets come. Around the same time, I remember asking my dad where my wings were, and I was, like, looking at my back and shit. Like, they were, like, hiding inside, and I was going to metamorphose like a, a caterpillar or something. He's like, boy, I don't know, but if you want the answers, I'll take you over to the church on Sunday mornings. He didn't seem to think it was a big deal, so why would I make a big deal out of it? And I didn't know what was going to happen after I died, which gave me even more fear about it, and I thought about it for most of my life. You and everyone else, thanks for admitting, though, that your only reason for believing is fear. I understand how you feel I once thought like you do. I realize you just don't get it, but some of us have come to accept nobody knows, even when they're really confident about it. What pisses me off is smug Bible thumpers pointing their fingers and pretending they're better than the people they shove in their little tiny boxes. It wasn't until I hit 23 years old that I had to know. And the reason why it even took me so long to look and to see if there is a God. <laughs> She's like, yeah, when I was 23, I figured out all the answers to life's big questions. When I was 23, I didn't have a fucking clue what was going on.
<laughs> like, I mean, it's so weird. She's like, ah, oh, man, I knew it all. Is because I always deemed myself to be a good person by a measure that I had created myself on what a good person is. And I figured that if there is a God, which I always kind of believe that there is one. Praise the God and he pitied us. Well, it never fails. Once again, you two hayseeds are showing how much you want for intellect. I figured I was going to heaven because I'm a good person and what kind of God would send me to hell if I had been a, such a good person my whole life. The answer to your question is the God of Abraham. And if you stepped into his tabernacle in the rag, you're to be put to death. Your God is disgusted by your stank ass. She touts this scripted response. I thought I could go to heaven if I was a good person. Nope. Some of the shittiest and worst people to ever exist would be populating paradise. If she hears about someone who doesn't believe, she gets that look on her face like she did when she said David Hume. Taylor is in a cult, and she just doesn't realize it. How dare you! Open his head! But then I made a lot of mistakes, and I no longer measured up to this version uh, that I figured was a good person. Color me intrigued. Were you doing the nasty unmarried? Were you partying and stealing makeup from Walmart and switching tags? What is this debauchery you speak of? Were you dishonoring your parents and working on Sundays? Did you run over someone and drive away? Did you pick your nose and eat it? And I had a lot of shame and I had a lot of regret and I needed to know. Where am I going when I take my inevitable last breath? I never got over being lied to about Santa Claus, but then the adults wanted me to believe all this other extra super silly shit. And all of the madness has got you going crazy. It wasn't until I found out about Jesus and the supernatural peace that comes over those who put their faith in him, the indescribable rest that comes upon you when you give all your cares and worries to him, the unimaginable joy that you experience when you find out the good news. I know The fear of the grave that is now inexistent because you know exactly where you are going. You are given the definite, beyond doubt, undeniable certainty of what will come when you close your eyes for the last time. You'll be doing fine once the music starts. Oh. And I found out that when you call out to Jesus, everything will change. That's a good place to end it. Taylor has all the answers to life and it's called the afterlife. Have you heard the good news? She reminds me of this dude I work with for a couple weeks. He got married at 18. He was 19. And all day long, she'd call him on the telephone at work and give him shit. And he'd vent on me. I said, dude, you're screwed. She's in love with her imaginary boyfriend, Jesus. And you'll never be able to live up to that guy. I was like, after all, whose name does she shout out when you're making love? Two years later, this dude called me on the phone out of nowhere. I didn't even know who it was at first. And he's like, you know, I asked her to call out my name. And she was like, no, when we make love, it's about glorifying Jesus. How did Taylor put it? This is one of the most insane videos on my channel. It completely blows my mind. The shit she says, the things she thinks she knows, and the things she wants you to think she knows. If you made it this far somehow... I know you're just as lost and confused as I am. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and maybe even share this one because this video has like almost 900,000 views. That means she's lied to all these people. So uh, see you in the next one or the last one. God, what's your sole purpose in this army? To do whatever you tell me, drill sergeant. God damn it, Gump. You're a goddamn genius. That's the most outstanding answer I've ever heard. You must have a goddamn IQ of 160. You are goddamn gifted, Private Gump.